welcome to another episode of Hacker's Misadventures in Scale Modeling. Now, I have something here that most people would like and could not afford. My, my ability to come across deals sometimes even amazes me. Now, to put in a little story, well, first let's, let's show you what I got. I can have gotten myself one of these. And I did not pay, and I did not pay the, and I did not pay the um, $450 or, or so that you get on eBay. This is one of the lost, lost uh, Revell modes of four Japanese aircraft. It's 30 second scale. They're, they're, uh, the four aircraft is the Jack, which I have, the Tony, which I have, and now I have the Midwing George. The other one is the Oscar. Whether I buy one of those or not, I don't know. But anyways, they were supposedly in the early 70s were being shipped to Japan because this is a Reveal Japan, Japan issue. As you can tell by the top of the box and if I can get a picture of it. The end of the box is definitely Japanese. So I've always wanted a Midwing George and I finally got one. And I, I paid what I would say a normal price for a kit like this. So let's have a look in the box. Now it all comes with all of it's still in the box. A guy who sold it to me said, oh, it's still in the packages, I'm going to open. Now the guy said to me that he put the clear canopy in a bag because it was just sitting there loose and he didn't want to get scratched up. But we'll have a look at that. So let's see what we got in the box. Because I've never seen one of these. Now, I think he's also gave me, as a bonus, some um, House of Ella parts, but I'll have to check. I don't think so. I think this is a two mold process. Now, the decals might be questionable here. I might not be able to use these. They look good, but I might not be able to use these, which is fine. I I got luck. I can get replacement markings for this aircraft. Of generic de deco sheets. Okay, so what we got here? Kit number is H107, and it's in Japanese. So let's see. I start off by by assembling the cockpit. Now you got to remember, this is a 70s kit, so there may not be a whole lot of parts to this. There's, there's the cockpit. It's all in Japanese, so I have no idea what the colors are. It gives you some English, and it gives you the part number. So we have to go by that. So you assemble the cockpit and the pilot. It gives you an engine, which doesn't look too bad. I'll have to see what the moldings are like. Goes on the back plate and the exhaust gives you the layout, the exhaust, and the engine. Then it gives you the landing gear. Now, little backstory. This wasn't originally a land-based aircraft. This was based was originally a float plane called the Rex, code name Rex, and it didn't have landing gear. So they retrofitted this aircraft from landing gear. Well, of course, the landing gear are a little bit long, so that makes it look a little odd, but it's not that bad. Anyways, we assemble our landing gear. We uh, assemble the, the fuel tank, some bombs, tail and your tail wheel. 
your similar fuselage halves and you put the cockpit in your horizontal stabilizer should you symbol and your tail wheel goes in and it gives you how how the instrument panel is supposed to go in you put the wings in and it gives you a gives you a, a former for the wings to make sure it keeps the correct angle on the wings and the and the flaps are set are the flaps separate I don't think so but that doesn't really matter because you can use those to make a separate flap because I don't think this part comes down at least on this at least on the other the lower wing George ah yes I was correct I'm sorry I I misspoke we do have flaps that come down cool that's a feature I wasn't expecting I'll be interested to see what's on the upper wings for the wheel wells anyways gives you a little bit of information here if any if anybody is who can translate Japanese I'd be or has a co English copy of this please let me, let me know and the assembly the, and the assembly of the aircraft the cowling on the nose and that no open flaps separate uh, separate propellers put our wheels our bombs and our doors on and our and our cannons and we put our canopy and other bits and bobs on I think that's an oil cool that's an oil cooler but I'm not sure and you got your clear parts for your your marker lights and it gives you this for the basic versions of the aircraft the big meaty chunky thing isn't it? it sort of reminds you of the Thunderbolt okay so let's have a look in the packages yes I was I think I was correct I think I think he gave me some extra parts for this aircraft. Some exhaust and that. Okay, I'll have to we'll have to check it out. We'll check it out in a minute. We'll just put this off to the side. Okay. Right. Let's open it up and see what we got. Let's see it in the bay. Cool. Oh, I may have to put this in a Ziploc bag because this bag seems to be seems to be very fragile for some reason. A lot of parts are coming loose. So always shake your bag out before you toss it because you never know what might be in it. All right. So let's have a look here. Now, this is the cowling, not bad, but it's raised detail, typical of the 70s kit. Here's that. Now, let's look at the fuselage. Now, the fuselage has, well, zoom in a little, well, let's zoom in a little more here. Hang on. See, the detail isn't too bad on this, on the inside. Though, though, um, we could, uh, come on, focus, there we go. We could add detail to that, but very seldom you, in 70s kits, you get the interior, interior like that. 
and there's the there's the cockpit floor with stuff on it. The engines look okay. The detail in the engines don't look too bad. Well, they come in two halves. Let's take a look at the detail on the fuselage. See, it's got raised rivet detail, and it's got some recessed. But as you can tell here, this isn't recessed. All that part, all the panel lines are raised detail. It wouldn't, won't matter much. You just have to rescribe that and you'll be fine. Just follow the panel lines. You might not get all, you might not get all the panels, but you know, panels like, uh, like this run, run one here, you might have to leave. Tail's got nice riveting. Riveting's not like huge. It's it's subtle. Fabric looks nice. Here's the here's the other parts. Here's the other half of the fuselage. Look on the inside. This is the fire wall. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's face it. Our friend, our friend's not up to modern quality. I'm pretty sure these fuel tanks were were paper, sort of similar to what they were using on P51s. Okay. Next is the wings. Well, I got some, a couple other minor little parts. Like, like whoop, where are we here? Like this. More part of the cowling. It goes together like that. Now look at the wings. That's what I'm interested in. I want to see. Ah, okay. So, here are the wings. Now, though they give you some interior detail, the drawback is the injection pins. Right smack in the middle of some of this. That will take some work to get out of. And both sides are the same. Top of the wing looks good. I don't know if I would try to get access to the ammo bays or not. It looks rather complicated. Unless somebody I know can 3D print this stuff for me, I might just leave it. I'm, whether I actually get around to building it is another question. But again, got raised details. So the, under the wing is sort of this, at least with the flaps, they, they, they put the, the um, ejection pin in a spot where it'd be hidden, but Kind of disappointing they did that. Let's put this thing. Let's put the wing together. We have it here. We have it here. I think it goes like that. So that it pulls the. It goes like that. Back, back Junior off here a bit. Yeah, that's better. You put it together like that. It gives you the back wall interior for the for the landing gear. 
base that go and it sort of goes together. Well, let's use one wing. It goes together sort of something like that. And the ejection pin is out of the way. And once you put the flaps on, you won't see it. You get you get cannon pods underneath this, which is fine. Okay, and this is our seat. So let's put this back over here, and let's have a look at the let's have a look at the um, clear canopy. Now remember, this is a '70s kit. Probably lit, probably older than that, but boxing says 70s. Okay, let's get a close-up of our of our clear parts. And not bad. Not bad really. Very little distortion. Which is good and but the 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 um, I'm feeling the canopy the, the canopy framing's not well defined so it will be that will be fun to uh, mask but not impossible and as I said the decals Deckles look good, but I wouldn't trust them. It's, this is a fairly old kit. It's a fairly old kit. It gives you markings for four aircraft. But they're all basically generically the same paint job. Nothing fancy. Okay. So, I made a bit of a boo-boo in my earlier part of this later part of this video. It seems that this is the sprue that goes with the kit. I didn't realize that. I, because of the color and that, it looked almost like a Hasegawa kit. But upon upon doing a little, little um, internet research, I found a picture of the sprue and uh, this is the screw. So my apologies that I screwed up. I will, I will um, also insert a picture of the actual screw. But we digress. So again, again, I apologize. So. So let's go on with, with the rest of the video. Anyways, that was my little thing here. Big Win George. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. And this is what I... And remember, for this particular reason I say this. That every build is an adventure. So go make it awesome. And I'll see you later. And support me. Okay, later. Bye.